Alrighty. Now, if you are exercising, one thing that can help with recovery is adequate protein intake. Looking at a 2022 observational study, looking at over 77,000 subjects in a 20 year follow-up. So a pretty impressive data point, 77,000 people tracked for 20 years. They found that increased protein intake decreased the likelihood you would have cognitive decline. They found that the optimal intake was roughly 20% of total calories. So to simplify this, if you're eating 2000 calories per day, maybe most women, that's 100 grams of protein per day. And if you're eating a 3000 calorie diet, that's perhaps most men, you're looking at 150 grams of protein per day. Now in this study, they did control for age and for caloric intake. So while observational studies have limitations, controlling can reduce some of those confounders. And while this is not an exhaustive list of variables to control for, they did a decent job of at least making sure they're controlling for age and for caloric intake. And this leads me to a few simple recommendations regarding getting an adequate protein. 30 to 50 grams of protein per meal, I think is a simple and effective target that you can have for your diet. And here's a list of per serving size, what you get regarding protein. So three ounces of chicken, 27 grams of protein, one scoop of whey protein, 25 grams of protein, a half a cup of Greek yogurt, 18 grams of protein, our evolution bar, 18 grams of protein. I have one or two of these per day, a three ounce piece of salmon, 17 grams of protein, three ounces of beef, 15 grams, two large eggs, 12 grams of protein, and half a cup of tofu, 10 grams. So it's not difficult to get an adequate dietary protein, but it is important for brain health. And also as we age, we tend to become what's known as anabolic resistant, meaning it's harder for us to build muscle. And therefore our protein intake is more important as we age, because we also know that there's a direct correlation between death from any cause or what's known as all cause mortality and the strength and size of your muscles. It's not to say you're trying to become huge, but you want to make sure to offset the natural decline in muscle strength and mass as you age and adequate dietary protein is one great way to do that in addition to the cognitive benefits that we just covered. Okay, let's talk about Shinrin Yoku. No, I did not sneeze. This is known as forest bathing. We've talked many a time on the podcast in the past how beneficial spending time in nature is. A 2023 review paper commented as follows. Stressful life factors can act as a contributing factor to brain fog. For example, financial, familial, or work stress can cause rumination, that's sort of like thinking and thinking and thinking, and depressive symptoms that affect cognitive function. So we know that stress is bad for your brain. And we know that part of what happens is stress leads to an overactivation of the limbic system, and one area in particular in the limbic system, the amygdala. Here's why that all matters and how it ties back to time in nature. A 2022 study took 63 otherwise healthy subjects, scanned their brains in a functional MRI while looking at scary faces, then had them go for a walk either in a city or in a nature scape, got back in the functional MRI, looked at the scary faces again, and rescanned the brains. What they found was that after the walk in nature, there was a significant reduction in the level of activation of the amygdala, which is what you want. You don't want a highly active amygdala if you're stressed, anxious, fearful, have poor memory. This usually equates to an overactive amygdala. And if you're relaxed and poised and otherwise healthy, this correlates with a lower or normal level of the amygdala activation. And Along with, in this study, the decrease activation of the amygdala, they found improved attention and enjoyment. In another study, similarly, they found, quoting here, we found evidence for associations between nature exposure and improved cognitive function, brain activity, blood pressure, mental health, physical activity, and sleep. Exposure to outdoor environments may reduce the negative effects of stress. So the reason why we want to spend time in nature is presuming that like anyone else, you have some stressors in your life. 
And so what can you do to mitigate or buffer those stressors? A great thing you can do is go for a walk in nature. And by the way, the nature scape doesn't matter. A very interesting, and I think a timely study from late 2023 found that it wouldn't matter if it was forest, lake, ocean, woods, parks, there was benefit with any of these nature scapes. And so the recommendation would be get two hours or more per week in nature. And this is associated with improved brain health, but even living near forests and oceans, living near nature scapes has been associated with a reduction of death from any cause. So this blue zone and green zone hypothesis as it's known uh, is something that we really wanna take note of and as best you can try to get time in nature. We have discussed diet and trying to make sure that we absorb nutrients from our diet, but also that we have a diet that's adequate in vitamin B12, iron, and protein. One good diet to achieve this, not to say it's the only diet, but one that I like is the paleo diet, because this will have adequate protein in most cases, iron, B12, but also polyphenols. These are antioxidant compounds in fruits and vegetables that will reduce brain fog or improve cognitive function and have also been shown to reduce leaky gut. And so this diagram gives you a nice overview of the paleo diet. You're going to have protein, healthy fats, fruits, and vegetables. Really simple sort of dietary template. You could also insert into here a Mediterranean diet. You're going to have a slightly different balance, but you'll hit a similar endpoint. And just one study here looking at the paleo diet, a 2017 randomized control trial, 30 patients with diabetes were given no intervention or the paleo diet plus exercise. And they found a 6% increase in volume of the hippocampus in those following the paleo diet. Now, here's an important point. This 6% improvement in the hippocampal volume, this brain area that's responsible for memory and conversion of short-term to long-term memory, this improved irrespective of exercise. So it's important to keep that in mind. Now, to be careful, it could also be the, these improvements, these brain health improvements could have occurred due to the fact that these people presumably were eating less and getting to a better sort of caloric balance and lost weight and had improvements in their insulin. A diet plan that's going to be replete with protein, vitamin B12, iron, and polyphenols is a good target. One, not the only one, would be a paleo diet for you to consider.